Mark Weems plays everything. He's from Durham, North Carolina. I am James Pentecost from Roxbury. The banjo evolved from a spike loop tradition from Africa. And in the early, uh, early years of uh, the colonial years, we have many references to the banjar or banza. And basically what they were talking about is a gourd banjo. So the, uh, the gourd banjo is our earliest American banjo. What I've got here is probably what a uh, American banjo looked like through the 1700s and uh, into the early 1800s until about 1840 or so. And it has, uh, as you can see it's a gourd, a plant gourd back, um, a stick through the middle of it. And instead of five strings, it's got four. So it does not have the bass string, but it does have the thumb string, and the three other strings are tuned to the same intervals as a modern banjo. It's just the pitch is uh, about three keys lower. So we're going to do a, uh, a tune here uh, from James Aird collection. He was a Scotsman and traveled all around to the English-speaking parts of the world and collected tunes, jigs and reels and all kinds of things. And he collected this one in Virginia. And it's called Poppy Ran Away. And the date on this, the, the collection was published in 1782. Scotland and Ireland, the, the jig, that, that's the 6 8 time jig, persisted in early American music up until about sometime in the early, uh, they tended to be gone, uh, except in the north, in the south they tended to be gone by the 1830s or 40s. They kind of played, uh, if you were a fiddler in the 1700s and you were playing for dance, you would have played jigs 6 8 time as well as, uh, as uh, wheels, which is what most of our teams are, full time teams are today. of music actually printed was printed in 1839 in Baltimore, uh, G.P. Knopf, who lived in uh, Farmville, Virginia, and he went out to the, he was a piano instructor, and went out to the local dances and, and got a bunch of tunes off of the fiddlers, and came back and taught it to his piano students in Farmville. 
And uh, the collection was published in, in Baltimore, like I said, in 1839. And it contains several gems. <laughs> Uh, this, this, uh, 
this is the size that they were fighting because some of them are large. This was 15 inches. You know, the modern tambourines are very small, but uh, it's a lot deeper sound and it's a whole lot harder to, I mean, to jump around there. The early uh, lithographs and stuff of uh, tambourine players show punching the thing and kicking it up in the air. So I've been trying to get James to work on this one. Dancing and playing the tambourine skill. <laughs>
build it. I'll build it. Right there. <laughs> so this thing, I would come back. Uh, well, we heard this clattering noise the first night, and I, I couldn't figure out what it was in my room, what I call my room. We live in an old house built in 1798, and uh, it's... Uh, it's Irish, as they say. <laughs> so things occasionally the wind blows, and you know if you have a candle lit on a windy night, it'll blow it out. But um, something crashed, and we we're kind of fairly used to that. But I couldn't find out what it was. Then I noticed this had moved. So anyway, finally, I decided I'm going to find out because I'm thinking there's some animal, a raccoon coming down the chimney, or possum something has got him it's too big for a mouse to do. So I tied it to a chair. <laughs> and in the morning it had moved about twenty degrees. I said, well I'm, this is this is this is not right. So I went and got a piece of cardboard, I got some flour and I put flour all over the floor over the cardboard, tied that thing to the chair, I said now. <laughs> we don't find out. Well, it moved. But there weren't any tracks. So, I locked it in a trunk. <laughs> now, I don't know if it's still moving or not, but I've not bothered me. They stayed in the trunk and still in place. <laughs> it was a common instrument in the early days. There even uh, tunes written about the jawbone, but it was played in the Caribbean, it was played in colonial America. Uh, several references in the late 1700s, early 1800s, about the uh, jawbones being played. And they played it with a hollow stick. So, you know, it's a... Just give me a look at like old Johnny Booker on it. <laughs> Martin. And he pushed Martin pretty hard. But uh, in the end, 
James Ashman died, and Martin won out. Through that period, the evangelists were popular. James Ashman started to build banjos as well. The banjo that Jim's holding there has a reproduction I made of an original James Ashman band. This is a reproduction of a higher model of James Ashman guitar than this. He made several different price ranges. This would be the lowest price range. This would be a mid-range guitar. This guitar was built out of an 1846 square grand piano that was damaged. So the music still lives on, even though the piano's gone. All around the farm, I wonder when I will end. Then many happy days I squander, many's the songs I sung. When I was playing with my brother, happy was I. Oh, take me to my kind old mother, then let me live and die.
an early form of rubber, rubber from India, and so it really has nothing to do with Indian. It's called India rubber. So it's India rubber overcoat. But, um, anyway.